Yo, what's up guys? It's Noah here. Uh, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking about some NFL player props I like on prize picks for the three game Thanksgiving Day slate. Um, you know, obviously every year on Thanksgiving, the NFL has three games. I think the NFL is like the only sport that has, you know, games going on on Thanksgiving. So it's kind of like a yearly tradition. We have three games and I wanted to give you guys some plays I like for this three game slate. I got three picks I like to, to give out in this video and we're going to have one play from each game. So, you know, if you're unfamiliar with how the NFL schedule is, it's pretty cool. It's they, they you know, first game of the day starts at 1230 Eastern time. Second game of the day starts at 430. And then the, the final game of the night starts at 820. So you have one game after the other. It's not like you're watching, you know, you, there's multiple games going on at one time. It's one game after the other. So it makes for a very fun sweat. It makes for a you know, very enjoyable experience in terms of watching. So I wanted to give you guys a play that I like from each game. Hopefully we'll have something to sweat in each game. Um, but we got three picks to give out in this video before we do talk through our three plays uh, for this Thanksgiving Day slate. As always, if you guys enjoy these prize picks videos and if they do help you out, please hit that like button down below and hit that subscribe button if you have not yet. Also, if you are new to prize picks, you, know, you can look at the bottom of the screen, sign up with my promo code, promo code NOAA. When you do sign up for prize picks with my promo code, you will get your first deposit matched up to $100. And I do want to mention that Prospects, they are running a very cool promo for this uh, Thanksgiving Day NFL slate. They have a free square. It's a free pick they're giving you. They have Justin Jefferson's passing, or excuse me, his receiving yards set at 0.5. Obviously, you know, you're know you going to take Justin Jefferson to have more than 0.5 receiving yards. And you just have to find any other pick you'd like to pair with this. You can pair just one pick with this play, make a two-pick entry. And if you get your pick right, you will triple up your money. Or you can pair up to five picks with this, make a six pick entry, and potentially win 25 extra money. So there's a lot of different ways you can play on prize picks. You can make a two pick entry, three picks, four picks, whatever you want to do. If you want to take the three picks I give out in this video, pair that with the Justin Jefferson free square, you can do so. Uh, but if you guys aren't playing on prize picks yet, you definitely need to sign up. Use code NOAA. You'll get a deposit bonus when you'll sign up, and you'll be able to use this Justin Jefferson free square, which is available until. Thursday night at 8.20 Eastern time when that um, Vikings and Patriots game starts. you got plenty of time to get this uh, promo in. I think it's a $20 limit. You can put $20 on one entry or you can you know break it up. You can make like four different $5 entries. It's just a max of $20 total dollars that you can play on the free square. Um, but you guys definitely need to be playing on Prospects, man. we got you know, a ton of content we're putting out for Prospects every week. I know a lot of you guys already play on Prospects, but for those of you that aren't signed up, get signed up. Use code NOAA. You will get a deposit bonus uh, when you do sign up. But let's go ahead and talk through the three picks I like for this Thanksgiving Day NFL slate. Man, it's you know my favorite time of the year. I, I love the Thanksgiving Day NFL slate. Sweating the games out is so fun. Um, you're going to be eating some good food as well. Hopefully, you all have a good Thanksgiving. But the first play that I like for this week, going to be you know obviously coming from the first game of the day. We're going to talk about Josh Allen. 24 and a half fantasy points for Josh Allen. I like the over here, and I think you know for one, this is just such a good matchup for the Bills. Such a good spot for them in general. Going up against the Lions is basically like one of the best matchups you can get. So far this season, when you look at uh, fancy points allowed to the quarterback position, Lions are giving up the most fancy points allowed to the quarterback position. In terms of passing yards allowed, they've allowed the sixth most passing yards to QBs, and they've given up 16 passing touchdowns, which is top 10 as well. Um, they've also given up a lot of rushing touchdowns to opposing quarterbacks. They're giving up the, the most, or they're tied with the Bears for the most rushing yards allowed to opposing QBs. They've given up five rushing touchdowns. We know Josh Allen is a guy that does have rushing upside. Um, he's one of these quarterbacks that just can do do everything. I mean, he can, he can have games where he throws for 350, 400 yards. He can have games where he runs for 60, 70 yards. Um, we know the Bills will call a lot of design runs for Josh Allen. So anytime they get in the red zone, anytime they get they get near the goal line, there's always a chance he's able to get some rushing touchdowns. Um, but just kind of you know thinking about 24 and a half fancy points, how can Josh Allen go over this line? I'm hoping for like 250 yards, two or three touchdowns, which is pretty much what he's projected for. And then maybe he gets like 40, 50 rushing yards. I mean, last few games, he's had like 80 plus rushing yards. He had 84 rushing yards against Minnesota. He had 86 rushing yards against the Jets. He had two rushing touchdowns in that game. Like Allen doesn't have to have a big passing game to go over this line. There's just so many ways he can go over this. And, and obviously he's one of these quarterbacks that, you know, can, can do it on the ground, can do it through the air. He's got plenty of weapons in Buffalo. It's a great matchup here. This game has the highest total on the slate right now, 54 and a half total here between the, the Bills and the Lions. The, the Bills have a 32 team total. Um, they're expected to put up over 30 plus points this week. Now we did see last week against Cleveland, they put up 31 points against Cleveland and Josh Allen only had 12.5, eight fancy points. That is obviously something we can't expect to happen again. Anytime the Bills put up over 30 points, it's almost a guarantee that Josh Allen is going to have at least like two or three touchdowns just because he accounts for so many of their offensive touchdowns. 
Um, they've been running the ball a little bit more lately. They've been having some success with, with Devin Singletary running the ball, but normally the Bills are one of like the most pass-heavy offenses in the league, and even in games where they've been playing, where, where they're playing with the lead, they'll still be out there throwing the ball. I mean, there's been some games this season where Josh Allen has had like 50, 60 pass attempts. I'm not saying that's going to be the case this week, but you know, even if they do come out here and beat up, beat up on the Lions and you know, they get a big, big win, there's still a good chance that Josh Allen could, could have over 24 and a half fantasy points. He's gone over this line in seven out of 10 games this season. I know the production has not been the best the last two games, uh, but I think this is a big spot for Josh Allen. It's a big spot for the Bills in general. They should beat up on this Lions team. The Lions just give up so many fancy points to quarterbacks. They're giving up the most points per game this season as well. Couldn't ask for a better spot here for, for Allen. So 24 and a half fancy points. Like, uh, I like Josh Allen to go over this line. I think he's got a good chance to go over this one. That'll be our first pick for today. And then our next pick will be in the next game. So we got uh, the afternoon game, the Cowboys and the Giants. I want to talk about Dak Prescott's fancy score. His fancy score is set at 18 and a half. I like the over here as well. And if you look over his last three games, Dak Prescott has really started to play well. He's been playing a lot better lately. He seems to be fully healthy now. 26.4 fantasy points against Chicago, 21.2 fantasy points against the Packers. And then last week, even in their big win where Dak Prescott didn't even play like the full game, he still had over 20 fantasy points last week. Um, I want to say he's had at least two touchdowns now in three straight games. So, you know, obviously the, the scoring has been there. He's thrown for over 250 yards, or he's had 250-plus passing yards in three straight games as well. He's also been getting some rushing yards. You know, Dak is not, he's not super, super mobile. He's not going to run for like 70, 80 yards like Josh Allen can. But Dak can still go out there and get you 20, 30 rushing yards. They will call design runs for Dak anytime they get near the red zone, near the goal line. So, like, there's always a chance he's able to get a rushing touchdown, too. I think 18 and a half fantasy points are just too low for Dak here. The Cowboys also have a really big team total. They have the second highest team total on the slate behind the uh, behind the Bills. 27.75 team total for the Cowboys. So they're expected to put up you know nearly four touchdowns this week. If the Cowboys wind up scoring four touchdowns on Thursday, good chance at least two of those are passing touchdowns from Dak, if not more than two. He's a massive favorite to throw two touchdowns this week. He's minus 185 on DraftKings Sportsbook to go over uh, one and a half passing touchdowns. His passing yard prop is set at like 260. So let's say Dak throws for 250 yards and two touchdowns. That would be 18 fantasy points right there. And that doesn't account for any rushing, you know, any rushing yards he gets. If he has 250 uh, rushing yards, or excuse me, 250 passing yards, two passing touchdowns, and then 10 rushing yards, that would be 19 fantasy points. And that's basically what he's projected for. His rushing yard prop, I think, is set at like 11 and a half or 12 and a half, something like that. Um, let me see. Let's see. His rushing yard prop said it, yeah, 10 and a half. So he's basically projected for over 18 fantasy points, just kind of looking at his odds across the board. He Again, he's a massive favorite to throw at least two touchdowns. He's thrown at least two touchdowns now in three straight games. I know the Giants have been playing pretty well this season. You know, they've been pretty playing well as of late. This is a spot where the Cowboys are big, big favorites. So like, I guess this could be another game where the Cowboys get out to a big lead and then they just kind of run the ball a lot in the second half. But the Giants have, you know, they've been playing solid. I think they can keep this game somewhat competitive um, to where the, you know, the Cowboys have to keep their foot on the gas pedal. We've seen in games that are competitive, like the Green Bay game, they were actually playing from behind in that one. And Dak threw the ball 46 times against Green Bay. Now these two games against Chicago and Minnesota, he's really not had to throw the ball a ton, just 27 and 25 pass attempts. But a lot of that's been due to game script. You know, they've been playing with a massive lead in those games. Could they play with a massive lead again this week against the Giants? It's possible. But again, the Giants have been playing well. Uh, they got one of the better records in the in the NFC. They look like one of the better teams. You know, a lot of people think the Giants are just frauds, and you know their their whatever seven and three record is not legit. And you you could argue that it's probably not. But I think this game can be somewhat competitive to where the Cowboys have to keep their foot on the gas pedal, and they just aren't going to be running the clock out. And if Dak you know throws two touchdowns, two hundred fifty yards, ten rushing yards, that would put him at nineteen fantasy points, and I think that's a good projection for him. I think his projection should be like nineteen and a half maybe 20. I think 18 and a half does feel a little bit too low here. So like that is our second play for today. And then third and final play, we're going to go to the last game, the, the night game, the uh, the Vikings and Patriots game. Want to talk about TJ Hawkinson. His fantasy score line is set at 10 and a half. And I also like the over here. Uh, TJ Hawkinson has had a really, really big role since getting traded to the Vikings. You look over his last three games with Minnesota. So again, the game against Washington, 16 fantasy points. The game against Buffalo, 11.5 fantasy points. And then last week, he only had 8.4 fantasy points, but that was basically like worst case scenario because you know the Vikings put up three points last week. They lost by 40. Hawkinson didn't even play the full game. That was basically worst case scenario. The other two games prior, he's gone over this line. 
and he's had a really, like I said, a really big role with Minnesota. So his snap counts, for one, have been really high. Like he's been playing almost every single snap. He uh, in week nine against Buffalo, or excuse me, week nine against Washington, T.J. Hawkinson played 91% of the snaps. Week uh, 10 against um, week 10 against let's see, yeah, against Buffalo, he played 93% of the snaps. Last week he only played 77% of the snaps, but again didn't play the full game because it was basically like a blowout loss. I think this is a spot that, you know, this game obviously should be competitive. The Patriots have a good defense. Their defense is probably going to be able to keep this game close. I do worry about the Patriots being able to put up points, but I think their defense is going to be able to do enough to, you know, keep this game somewhat close. So we should obviously see Hawkinson play the full game, get 90 plus percent of the snaps. And he's had a really, really good target share. He's seen really good volume in these three games with Minnesota. He's second on the team with a 24% target share. He's averaged um, all, nearly nine targets per game. He's had, or excuse me, yeah, yeah, he's had nine targets per game pretty much. 28 targets through their first three games. He's averaged over nine targets per game. The volume has been amazing. The playing time has been amazing. He's been one of Kirk Cousins' top targets behind Justin Jefferson. I mean, there's really nothing you can't say. The, the role is great for TJ Hawkinson. Now, when you look into the matchup against the Patriots, the Patriots do have a really good defense, but they've actually kind of struggled against tight ends this season. So looking at fantasy points allowed to the tight end position, the Patriots are top 10 in terms of fantasy points allowed to tight ends. They've also given up seven receiving touchdowns to tight ends, which is tied for second most in the league. And I was looking at some of Hawkinson's props kind of across the board. Um, his receiving yards is set at like 45 or 46 and a half. His receptions is set at four. I was debating on taking receptions versus fantasy score. I think TJ Hawkinson, if he does get like five catches, he probably is going to get fancy points too. Like as you can see, he's pushed the reception prop in at least four out of his last five games. Like last week, he got five catches, but he didn't get fancy score. Um, but then you know the week prior to that, like let's see, this week against my or the game against Miami, he only had three catches, but he got fancy score that game. I'm guessing that was the game that he scored a touchdown, and that's one of the reasons I like. Okay, he didn't even have a touchdown that game. He just had three catches for 80 yards. Um, but one of the reasons I like taking fantasy scores is because you can get bailed out with touchdowns. I mean, touchdowns are one of the toughest stats to predict in fantasy. It's just, you know, it's fluky. I mean, we just never know how many touchdowns a player is going to get on a night, on a game-to-game basis. But the fact that the, the Patriots have given up the second most receiving touchdowns to tight ends this season is, is a plus. Hawkinson's had a great role. He's getting great volume. He's playing almost every snap. I mean, what? Three, he, he could literally have like two catches and still hit fancy score because he could catch a touchdown. He could have like two catches for 30 yards and a touchdown, and that would be 11 fancy points. Um, but I think if he gets like five catches, 55 yards, he's probably going over this line. Um, I think getting getting the potential for a touchdown, though, is one of the reasons I like fancy score. But honestly, I think he's got a good chance to go, go over all these numbers. Receiving yards, receptions, don't know about targets, but receiving yards and receptions, I like both these. I think he's got a good chance to go over both these numbers. Augustine has just been so involved with the Vikings. Um, he's going to be one of their top targets, it seems like. Kirk Cousins has been locking in on Hawkinson. And the Patriots, they've given up some, some fancy points and some touchdowns to tight ends this season. That's, that's kind of been like their weakness. So that's what I'm liking for this uh, NFL slate on Thanksgiving, guys. We've got three total plays, one from each game. So this should be kind of a fun sweat. You'll have something to sweat out in each game. Hopefully, every one of these plays hits. And we'll have, you know, hopefully, like, after the first game, Josh Allen doesn't like it. Because if Josh Allen misses, that's going to be super annoying to to miss on the first play of the day, but hopefully we'll have a sweat in each one of these games. Again, we do have the Justin Jefferson free square as well that you know we're playing. That one shouldn't be much of a sweat though at all. That one should hit pretty easily. Um, but I like these three plays, man. This is what I'm liking for the Thanksgiving Day NFL slate. Might have a few more plays posted on Patreon for this three gamer. I don't know yet. Um, I'll have to take a look at the board again and see if I find any more plays I like. If I do find any more plays that I want to play on Thanksgiving, I will share those over on Patreon. So if always, as always, if you guys do enjoy these prospects videos and you want more prospects plays from me, I give those over on Patreon. You can check that out linked down below in the description. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Appreciate you watching. Best of luck this week. Hit that like button before you do get out. Uh, before, before you guys do get out of here, hit that subscribe button if you have not yet. And again, if you haven't signed up for prospects, use promo code NOAA. You will get your first deposit matched up to $100. But best of luck this week, guys. Thanks for watching the video, supporting the content. Hope you guys have a great Thanksgiving. Enjoy the day. Hopefully we can win some money, eat some good food as well. Um, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.